Hello, welcome to Ford Din Rid and part three of my Dolgok conversion kit videos. Want to see how I completed this little model? Come have a look. Had you been watching the previous videos, you'd know that I got as far as priming this model. Now it's time for the top coat. This time I opted for enamel paints rather than acrylics, just because the enamel would be tougher. The top coat would be Humbrol's number 25 blue and number 33 black. I sprayed the blue first, left it for 24 hours to harden and then taped up the model and used a bit of mask all around the foot plate to cover the areas which would be painted red. tape has been removed and this is the result of the black added uh, a few little paint chips on the blue but I'll touch that up however it's come out nicely uh, now these parts are very delicate uh, as a fan with the tape they did pull it off and um, so to glue that back on um, and I think I would recommend if you were going to paint this particularly if you were going to do Renius because you need to put his name on the boiler to paint it first and then do the lining and add the uh, names and then add the pipe works so sort of did the pipe work as a dry fit make sure it goes in place but don't glue it in till you've painted it that'd be uh, my recommendation if i were to do that again that's probably how i do this uh, i might do it again depends if i can get another one of these kits and i might make a renius next time uh, so now for the detailing parts then so paint the buffer beam the copper pipe work etc and then we should have a nice looking uh... So with the black and blue done, it was time for the detailing colours. Red for the buffer beam. Brass for the handrails. I wanted copper for the pipework, but I didn't have any at the time, so I used bronze. But it was a little too dark and I did rectify this later on. At this point, you need a combination of a steady hand, a fine paintbrush and patience to really get the details right. Right then, this is the loco all painted up. Gone round, I've touched up the bits of blue and bits of black which got missed by the air airbrush or where the little chips were. I've done the running board with the, the black top, red sides. Uh, Humbrol number 56 for the buffers and then I've got um, Humbrol, I think I used 55 and 54 for the handrails and the various pipes. Painted the interior of the cab, you can just make that out in there. So that's all painted up. Uh, the body's not sat quite on the chassis correctly, I haven't put it on properly, I've just sort of sat it on top. Uh, I've done the side rods. Um, now, one thing I'm going to warn you I tried to remove the, the slide bars from the cylinder because I was hoping to spray it like I'd done with the rest of it rather than use a brush so you don't get brush marks. Um, this, as far as I'm aware, does not come out. So I tried pulling it out, that didn't work. I thought about wobbling it and I could feel some movement only to realise that what I'd actually done is I'd snapped the metal here and here. So I've managed to super glue it back in place. I've test run it. It does work, so it does seem to hold for now, hopefully. Fingers crossed it will stay that way. But that is a, a word of warning. That does not come out of that. Don't try it. You're just going to damage the model. So with that all painted, I'm going to give it a gloss coat. I'm thinking about lining it, but the only problem I've got with lining is I've put the number one a bit too high here. So I'm going to have to find some very, very thin lining if I do line it. Otherwise, I might just leave the loco as it is. But 
gloss coat first and we'll see how I get on after that. So you saw it painted and now it's all shiny. That's some gloss varnish applied. It's looking very nice, I think. We'll spoil it by weathering it. So, I've been through my figure box. I've got some classic Daypole figures. I think everybody has these figures who model in O O gauge or 009. Uh, common as muck, but clothing seems quite suitable for the period I want to do. So I've selected these two to be slightly modified to fit in the cab so that uh, the Sloco can have a driver and fireman. The first job was to cut off the bases and the tools. Okay, so I dropped the chaps down, and as you can see, the time lapse it was quite a tight fit in there. Now I've got what I wanted to be the fireman, and he's got in there just, just fits in there. I think his head is just literally he's wedged to the ceiling. Um, might have to file that down because I haven't quite pushed the bottom of the cab to the foot plate yet. And you can definitely see his head's pushing to the ceiling, so he might need just a little bit of filing to make him just a little bit shorter. Um, the one I wanted to be the driver. I did suspect I was being a bit ambitious with this figure. Um, I was hoping to sort of have him in a position where it looked like he was uh, on some of the levers, but uh, it is just not practical to get him in there and get him turned into a position that looks like he's driving the loco. So I'm going to have to go back into the figure box and find someone else. And I might dig around and see if I've got any HO scale figures because these chaps are just a little too tall. Um, so I'm going to see what I can find. Right then, gone through the figure box and I have selected this flag man to be the driver. So, uh, get him in focus. Needs a, a little bit of adapting. Got the, obviously, remove the flags. But I think, see on there, I think I look quite, quite suitable to sort of just stood in the cab, looking forward. Uh, just sort of that casual pose there, not taking up too much room with his legs spread out, etc. I did look at HO scale figures, I found one, and to be honest, you really don't realise the difference until you put them next to each other. I mean, look at the size of this man, you, you, you think he's in the distance. It's pers false perspective there. So, way too small, I put him in the cab, and uh, it looked like a child was trying to drive it. Uh, so we can't have that, so um, yeah, he's out. Um, and this guy's in, so let's modify him. Right then, so the flag man was, again, too big to fit in the loco cab. It is a very, very tight fit in there. So I've moved the original figure that was going to be the fireman. He's now on the other side. He's going to be my driver. And I then got another of the daypole workmen. And it's the one where he's standing the shovel in his hand you can't quite see it but it does seem like it's the same figure the same pose which is a bit annoying i would have liked them a bit more different but is what it is as i say it's a tight fit in there so i've got my two chaps then get painted up and glued in there and uh i'm also need to do some glazing for the windows so i'm gonna get onto that as well <laughs> So I've reassembled the loco. Driver and fireman are inside. I've added a little bit of uh, acetate glazing. And taking it out for a little test run. Runs are right forwards, but backwards. Just a sort of stuttering it never used to do. I can only conclude that is due to the fact that I damaged this. And I think that's affecting it. And the glue is already worn off with the movement of the motion. So I think I'm going to have to try and work out how to repair that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to try and get hold of a spare. Which is very annoying, because obviously considering the amount of time and work I've put into redoing this loco. I'm quite pleased with how it's looking. But it's got to run right. It's not quite running right. So I'm going to look and try to repair that. So this is the damage I've done to it. 
uh, I took the cylinders off and this part immediately broke away. So just super gluing it back on was never going to work. It's going to need some sort of bracket or support behind there to hold it in place. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I think the worst comes to worst, I might just have to put side plates on the loco and make it sort of a, a tram engine, which I don't really want to do because uh, it sort of spoils the the effect. But need must. Uh, you know, I don't want the loco to go to waste just because of a silly little mistake I made. But a prior warning, as I say before, if you are going to do this modification to the engine, don't try and move these parts. They don't come out. Don't wobble them. Don't try and remove them. They're just going to break. So just use a brush, paint the cylinders, and just be really careful with it. Lesson learned. Expensive lesson. That's always an expensive lesson with model railways, isn't it? Right then, so I had a few thoughts of how I could repair this. Um, in the end, I've decided to just drill two holes and then add just a little bit of brass rod just the same length as uh, the end of the motion here. And hopefully I'm gonna glue them in there and then glue that to the motion. I'm hoping the glue will hold it. Should be a bit stronger than when I was just relying on the glue to just make that bond between the two and sort of got the brass rod to make the strength there. So, see how it goes. Can't be worse than what it is, so um, yeah, sticking time. Right then, that's the motion glued back in place. And as you can see, where we get it lined up, there you go, look. So it does work. The uh, brass rod isn't getting in the way. If it holds whilst the loco's going round, that's another question, but I'm um, just going to let that glue cure, and then we'll give it a test run. And here's the moment of truth. I've got the logo to work. Still got a bit of a chatter when running backwards. I don't know if it actually might just need a bit of a run in and maybe a bit of an oil. Because I've got that bracket held just right now. There's no movement there. It hasn't wobbled. It's held nice to the brass. I've even sort of held the loco in place and run it fast. So, yeah, I'm pretty much there. Now, there's a bit of a gap at the back of the cab there. I think my fireman is just a little too tall. I might just need his hat shaving down a little bit just so we can set down the cab back onto the foot plate. There's a bit of a, bit of a bend here right now, so I need to correct that and uh, before I weather it I also need to name the loco. Right then I'm trying to solve the mystery of the poor running so I've taken the body off I tested the chassis and it ran perfectly in either direction even with my modification uh, and you see I've just popped the body back on but I haven't put it back on the chassis fully and it runs beautifully now so Something must be catching those wheels. That's all I can conclude. Um, now, I know when you did the modifications to the... Um, uh, I can't think what they're called now. Makes me look stupid, doesn't it? Splashes. They're called splashes. But when I'd taken the splashes off and placed them with the new ones, it said, you know, you've got to be careful. There is clearance. So I can only conclude that it must be catching on the splasher, maybe. Because uh, I was having issue running it backwards, but it was fine forwards. But then I realised that the smoke box wasn't quite sat in the frame. So I put the smoke box in the frame. And as I said, there's a bit of a bowing in here. So I think, it's, I think it's all got a bit tight and out of shape. And I think that might be causing an issue. So I definitely need to play around and try and find out what that problem is. Otherwise, this is never going to run right. Okay, so I took the loco apart. Uh, I couldn't see any issues. I put the running board back on, didn't put the uh, boiler, etc. Uh, and the wheels weren't clashing on the splashes. Um, so that wasn't really the issue. So I put the body back on. And I think if you compress it too tight, 
it just holds everything together and because the loco just moved and it seized so i just loosened this end just a fraction and now should I mention i put a little bit of a uh, oil on the uh gearing as well so that's probably helped but now it's running as smooth as the day i bought it very pleased with that right then so the loco is now working running very nicely um now all that fiddling about has resulted in a few little paint chips you can see the fireman needs to touch up on his foot here uh, rodding's got a little chip on the red so i just need to touch those up and i Got a little bit of copper paint on the blue on the other side, so that needs touching up as well. And then a little bit of gloss varnish over the top of that. Um, so you may notice that the pipework is a different colour to previous shots, and that's because I've used this paint here by uh, Mr. Hobby. Never heard of this brand before, but uh, picked up in A and H models in Brackley. Um, which is a nice little model shop. It's mostly continental stuff, but if you are in the area, you know, do have a visit, support your local model shop. Um, and this paint, never used it before. Uh, it's quite like um, Tamiya paint really, but really nice to use. I was quite impressed with it. Um, I think the copper's come out really well. So now is the moment I need to name the loco. So, uh, there's light railway stores online that do the custom name plates. Uh, I've got three done up so far. And anyone who watches Dad's Army will obviously recognise these names. I've decided to name all my locos after the characters in there. Uh, now it was number one. I thought Captain Mannering would be a suitable name for the loco. However, Captain Mannering is a rather large nameplate, so I may have to save that for a different loco. And we'll go for the Welsh sounding name of Jack Jones. We'll give it a fictional backstory of he can be the founder of what I'm going to call the Mid Snowdon Railway. Right then, nameplates have been applied. Uh, to do this, I stuck them on with a bit of glue and glaze, um, which just allows you to obviously put the plate on and because it's PVA, it gives you a little bit of movement, so you've got a bit of time just to adjust, and then the excess can be wiped up uh, without spoiling the loco, rather than super glue, which would leave nasty white marks everywhere. So I've gone round, I've touched up all the little paint chips, and we are ready for weathering. So. For the weathering, I'm going to use various uh, amounts of paint. Um, you don't have to use so much paint. There are books I've seen where people just use two colours. Um, I think, well, there are four colours, I say black, white, uh, brown leather, and uh, gunmetal, which is quite effective. I think that's Tim Shackleton. I think it's one of his weathering books. Um, however, I have lots and lots of paint, so I do have the advantage that I can just use various tones. So I'm going to use the Track Weathering series from Life Colour. Which is roof dirt, weathered black, sleeper grime, track dirt, frame dirt, uh, brake dust. Uh, I've also got uh, a couple of greases from their grease series. I've got dirty grease and just grease. That just gives an oily effect where we want to sort of uh, weather the motions or around the buffers. Uh, I've also got gun metal to do around the buffers as well by Tamiya. And then I've got these AK washes, which I think I might be using as well. So I've just got neutral grey, streaking grime, light dust. Uh, neutral grey again, I've got two of them. I don't know why I've them, uh, two there, and uh, that's just a thinner. So that's the collection, uh, and we start weathering. So I started with the Tamiya gunmetal, painting around the buffers and using a little bit in the dry brush method on the smoke box and the cap roof. Next I thinned down some life coloured weathered black, put it in the airbrush and sprayed all around the model, concentrating mostly on the roof to represent the soot deposit from the funnel. I then dry brushed roof dirt and weathered black in all the nooks and crannies around the bottom of the loco where there'd be a build up of dirt. I'd use a damp cotton bud to remove some of the paint afterwards as even though it was dry brushing the application was still a bit heavy in places.
Next job was the wheels and the underside of the logo. I used the three browns in the set, the sleeper grind, tractor and frame dirt and used them in various blends to represent all the muck and grind that would splash up over the years of running up and down the line. A small amount of these colours was added just above the frames as well, just to blend in with the black and roof dirt I'd used previously. Again a damp cotton bud was used to wipe away some of the excess paint. Next I added a little bit of dirty grease to the front of the buffers and then used the other grease on the motion. And then finally to finish off I used a very small amount of the washes just to blend everything together. And then that was that. The model was complete. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this how-to on uh, the uh, narrow plants uh, doll gockification kit. That's a mouthful to say. Uh, obviously, there's been uh, trials in getting here, but I'm here now. I'm very pleased with the loco. Uh, I hope you found the video uh, useful. If you plan to do a conversion kit yourself, and obviously to learn from my mistakes, so it's not to make them on your model. Uh, if you have liked the video, then please give me a thumbs up. See more, subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you next time.